Well, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Al Fadi, and I'd like to welcome you back to another uh, Facebook live stream with me here in studio, my dear brother, Sam Shamon. And today's live stream is yet another special edition that will be combined between Facebook and also my radio show, Let Us Reason. Now, the topic of the, uh, you know that we're going to discuss today is going to be a very interesting topic. I did address this a few months back, I think in August. I talked about the idea that Paul, the Apostle Paul, is mentioned actually in early Islamic literature. So we went and dug up more uh, you know, information and we're thankful for one of our dear uh, brothers who put together a large document for us. We're so thankful for him and send it to both me and Sam, among That's others. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go through this document right now and we are going to try to cover as much as we can, of course, in the next hour or so. But we are going to show you, and especially if you're a Muslim, that your idea that Paul is a liar, that Paul is an apostle not sent by God, that Paul basically was not really recognized as a messenger or someone who is sent by Christ. All of these lies that you're told about, mm -hmm. we are going to expose to you that your own sources actually deny every single thing that you just told us about the Apostle Paul. So I want you to come here with an open mind and try to focus. Let me repeat again. Try to focus on the references we're going to give you and the passages we're going to mention to you from the Quran, by the way, and then you'll be amazed how many times the Quran actually, conf uh, the, the commentators confirmed things about Paul that are found in the Bible, in Sorry. the scripture itself. Sam. Yes. I want to turn it over to you, brother. Yes, and sir. you've dealt with this like yes. I did many times. Yes. Yes, what yes. are the big issues yeah. when it comes to the Apostle Paul that yes. you've been encountering so far? Yeah. Before I do that, I just want to ask the Lord Jesus Christ to bless us by the power of His Holy Spirit, to fill us with the Spirit, to speak truth without error for the glory of Jesus as He cleanses us in His precious blood. We love you, Son of God, Amen. our great God and Savior, in Jesus' name. Because without the Lord Jesus, we can't do this. Now, why are we discussing the blessed Apostle Paul, the true servant of Jesus Christ, unlike Muhammad, who was not a true prophet? Because Muslims realize that the Bible, specifically the New Testament, contradicts the Quran. So now they're left with one of several options. Either Muhammad is a false prophet, and no Muslim would dare go that route, because if they do, then they stop becoming Muslim. Or that means the previous <clears throat> scriptures have been corrupted, and the message of Jesus has been hijacked. Now, since the Quran acknowledges that the disciples of Jesus the Hawariyun, as you know, the Arabic, quite, yeah, that's right. uh, quite clearly. The disciples of Jesus in the Quran are said to be Muslims. In chapter 3 of the Quran, verse 52, and chapter 5, verse 111. 352, 5111, the Quran puts in the mouth, the mouths of the disciples of Jesus, the claim that they are Muslims. So that's right. they can't then look at Peter and say, well, Peter corrupted the message, or John corrupted the message, or Matthew corrupted the message. Correct. Why? They're because stuck. they are disciples yep. of Jesus, acknowledged by the Quran to be true <clears throat> messengers of Christ. So therefore, it must be Paul, because according to the records, Paul didn't follow Jesus when Jesus was on earth. He wasn't what they call a, a Sahabi, a companion of Jesus. That's right. He was actually a follower of the followers of None Jesus. None of the, the Sahaba. Yes, in yes, their mind, yes, he in is their a mind. Tabi'in. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you, you, you gave the t terminology right. precisely. Right. So then that means it must have been Paul who corrupted the message of Jesus because it's easy to point the finger at Paul because Paul wasn't a disciple of Jesus when Jesus was on earth. Now for the Christians there, I don't want them to misunderstand what we're saying. Jesus is a true, uh, sorry. Paul. Paul is a true apostle of Jesus Christ, because Jesus appeared to him, commissioned him to be apostle to the Gentiles, and then Paul met with the very eyewitnesses of Jesus. He met with Peter, John, and the brother of Jesus, James, and they confirmed that he's a true apostle, a legitimate apostle commissioned by the same Jesus that commissioned them. Yeah. But for the Muslims, Paul is the bad guy. He corrupted the message. Amen. So I'm going to turn to my radio audience. This is Let Us Reason. If you're tuning in, I hope you're going to enjoy this. Another special edition that is being aired right now also on Facebook. And to my Facebook uh, you know, viewers right now, Facebook Live, I should say, uh, keep in mind that after 24 minutes, we are going to take a quick pause. 
and then we'll start part two recording also for the Let Us Reason. You can go and listen to this on uh, our radio show, I should say, on our Facebook uh, you know, post that will be on December 19th and also on our website, sierrainternational.com. Now, you've heard what uh, basically uh, Sam mentioned. I was going to call him the Apostle Sam, but he's <laughs> not there yet, you know. Yeah, no, no, no. So I'm working there. I'm working Sam there. mentioned that <laughs> Paul, according to the Bible, was confirmed That's right. by uh, Peter, for instance, by John. And you'll be surprised how many of the Islamic commentaries have mentioned these names, Peter and John, to be associates of Paul. Exactly. Let me let me give a, a, an sure. example. Cha we're going to show this, of course, on the screen. Chapter 36 of the Quran. Chapter 36 of the Quran, verses 13 and 14. Everybody can see the Arabic and English. And I'm going to read the English right now. It says, And present to them an example, the people of the city, when the messengers came to it, when we sent to them to... But they denied them, so we strengthened them with a third. And they said, indeed, we are messengers to you. That's the translation according to Sahih International. Nevertheless, I know he hates it, but that's okay. Yes, right. In Arabic, it says, <laughs> Let's take a look now and take a journey about a couple of those commentaries. For instance, Ibn Abi Hatim, one of the commentaries says, Shu'aib... Uh, he says, Shu'aib al-Jaba'i said, The names of the two messengers where it says we sent to them two are Simon. That's right. Who's that? Simon Peter, Peter. and John, Yohanna. Okay. And the name of the third is who? Bolus. Paul. That's right. Gee. That's right. It sounds like they were okay with him. And just, uh, just to let people know, I have this entire file document on my on my site. So if you guys want to actually read these citations for yourselves and actually download them and use them, go to answeringislamblog.wordpress.com, answeringislamblog.wordpress.com. All these citations, all the references, about 23 references Amen. from authoritative Muslim sources are, uh, are all posted there on answeringislamblog.wordpress.com because we want the Christians to use these citations, spread them to all the Muslims Amen. until every Muslim knee bows and every Muslim tongue confesses Jesus Christ is the true Son of God, the Lord of glory, their only hope of salvation. And I will be doing the same thing also on my own Facebook yes. uh, pages, by the way, and for my Patreon patrons, I'll have that available for you as well for the same purpose. Yes. Take it and spread it around. We really need to put this resource in the hands of Christians. Christians, please, if you're hearing this and you're watching this, please take <clears throat> this document, take these citations, use them for the glory of Jesus Christ. Now, what's interesting here, again, these Muslim commentators are acknowledging that Paul met the very eyewitnesses to the earthly Jesus, meaning Simon and John were two of the disciples, Sahaba, that walked with Jesus, <clears throat> did ministry with Jesus, and were authorized by Jesus when Jesus was on earth to spread his message, his gospel, to the ends of the world. So this is unlike Muhammad. Muhammad, who comes centuries later, had no access to the eyewitnesses of Jesus, didn't have any disciple of Jesus that walked with Jesus, commissioning him and legitimizing his apostleship, contrary to what we find in the case of the blessed apostle Paul. Which is kind of amazing, by the way, Sam. I mean, you have the early Muslims who were so close to the events of Islam and even so close or closer to the events that took place in the first century Christianity, and yet they have no problem acknowledging Paul. Yes. Why is it that our Muslim friends today somehow invented things that the Quran itself never says Paul is a liar? Exactly. What's the, I mean, didn't the Quran mention Abu Lahab by name? Yes, it did. Why wouldn't the Quran mention Paul by name, for instance? Precisely. If, if, the, if Muhammad thought Paul was an antichrist or a false apostle corrupted the message of, of Jesus Christ, then we would at least expect to find in his Quran some reference to this evil bad man who corrupted the message of Jesus Christ. But in, uh, on, on the contrary, what we find in the Quran, implicit confirmation, when I say implicit, because in the Quran, the disciples of Jesus are not mentioned by name. In the Quran, we're not told the names of the disciples of Jesus, let alone the Apostle Paul. But what the Quran does say about the disciples of Jesus, there is no way, and I'm hoping the Muslims are hearing this, there is no way if a Muslim is going to be honest to the Quran, let me repeat, honest to the Quran, 
because sadly, they do to the Quran what they accuse Jews and Christians of doing. They accuse Jews and Christians of tampering with the Bible, tampering with the text, misinterpreting the words by their tongues, and that's exactly what Muslims do. They do the very thing to their Quran which they <clears throat> slanderously accuse Jews and Christians. They twist the Quran with their tongues. Why, why do I say that? Before we look at some of the references... Isn't it funny that the Quran said this? Yeah, but you know, you know it's the Quran says that we twist the words with our tongues. Chapter 3, verse 78. Mm -hmm. And yet, that's exactly what the Muslims are doing. The very accusation that the Quran levels against Jews and Christians slanderously slow. Now, again, uh, I don't want to say there haven't been Jews and Christians that have deliberately misinterpreted the Bible. Sure, we find sure. Jews and you Christians doing that to this day. Exactly. Right? So, but again, this charge can be leveled against the Muslims with greater force because it is the Muslims who are constantly butchering, <clears throat> twisting, misinterpreting the plain reading of the Quran. And now in your case, you know the Arabic, so they can't pull a fast one and say, well, you don't know Arabic. Well, the Arabic is your mother tongue, so they can't use that canard, can That's they? That's right. That's right. And they can go to my very post on Facebook back in the end of August, uh, the week of August 26. I did exactly the same thing, and I used the Arabic, clearly read it in Arabic, yes. to show those who claim to be Muslims, if you read Arabic, go and say it then. Now, what, what, what did I mean? And we're going to go into the site. Citations. We got about 23 of them, so we're not going to be able to deal with all of them. Absolutely. In these two this episodes. is a teaser, by the way. Yeah, to whet your appetite to go and get the document. Again, go to answeringislamblog.wordpress.com and he'll make it available. Download the document, start copy and pasting these citations, put them on your social media pages, and then use them in your witness to Muslims until they fall in love with the true Jesus Christ, the Son of Amen. God. Now, when I said the Quran implicitly confirms the legitimacy of Paul, here are the passages that I have in mind, and let's break down the implication, then go right into the Muslim expositors. And in fact, at least in the case of Al-Qurtubi, Qurtubi actually mentions Paul in reference to one of the citations. Now let me look at the citations first, bring out the implication of these citations. Now if a Muslim is going to be honest to the Quran, there is no way he or she can get around the clear implications of what their own Muslim scripture teaches. Chapter 3, verse 55. Chapter 3, verse 55. <clears throat> Remember when Allah said, O Jesus, lo, I'm gathering thee and causing thee to ascend unto me, cleansing thee of those who disbelieve, and I'm setting those who follow thee. Let me emphasize this. I'm setting those who follow thee, right? Those who believe in you, <clears throat> setting those who follow thee <clears throat> above those who disbelieve until the day of resurrection. That's right. Another translation says, I will set thy followers above the unbelievers till the day of resurrection, the resurrection day. Now notice God's promise to Jesus. Now we don't believe these are the words of God, and we don't believe this conversation took place between God and Jesus, but the Muslims do. So Muslims, you now you're stuck with the implication of this passage. God promised Jesus that his followers, those who loved him and believed in him and trusted in him, they would be placed above, they would become dominant superior over against the unbelievers till the day of resurrection. Right. So their dominance and superiority started when Jesus was taken to heaven and they will remain uppermost and dominant till the day of resurrection, which is confirmed by this next passage. 61 verse 14 of the Quran. Chapter 61 verse 14, as the Lord Jesus grants us clarity of thought and speech to do justice to this topic. O believers, be you helpers of God. Help God, or Allah in Arabic. As Jesus, the son of Mary, said to the apostles, said to his disciples, Who will be my helpers unto Allah? Who will be my helpers assisting Allah? The disciples, apostles said, We will be helpers of Allah. Now notice again what the Quran says. A party of the children of Israel believed, meaning in Jesus, and a party disbelieved. And we strengthen and confirm those who believed over against their enemies, and they became the uppermost, the dominant, the masters. The dominant, exactly. Wait, you're saying, according to the Quran, Jesus' followers were strengthened by God Almighty, given victory over the unbelievers, and they became uppermost and dominant, and that dominance will remain till the day of resurrection? Absolutely. And you know, uh, when you look at the commentary of al Qurtubi, he says that this verse came down in the Apostles of Isa, which is the Islamic name basically for Jesus. Ibn Ishaq said, Isa, or they, let's call him Jesus now, Jesus sent them from the Apostles and followers of Peter and Paul. Thank you. To Rome. Emphasize 
that El Qurtubi, one of the greatest Muslim expositors, is explaining chapter 61, verse 14. And that's what it is. It's based on 61, 14. And on top of this, he says, Andrew walked to the land where its people ate people. He went to uh, the probably Africa or yeah. somewhere. Thomas went to the land of Babylon, okay, and the land of the east. Philip to uh, Cartagena, which is Africa. And Jonas uh, to Dagas, the village of the people of the cave. I mean, he's listing names of apostles, yes. you know, even if he butchered the name, yeah, yeah. nevertheless. Because we don't expect them yeah. to know our sources that well because, yeah. as you can tell, they were obviously ignorant of the teachings of Paul and the other apostles because there's no way if these people actually knew what the apostles taught and understood their message that they would be endorsing not just Paul, endorsing any of the, of the apostles because it's not just Paul. When you take our earliest sources and the 27 books of the New Testament, are our earliest sources. Even skeptical, critical scholars like Bart Ehrman would admit the four Gospels are the only Gospels that come from the first century, right? He believes they're anonymous, but still he admits when you want to reconstruct a life about the historical Jesus, you go to the four Gospels and the letters of Paul. So it's not just Paul. All our sources from the very earliest right. of, of Christian history, all of these sources testify that Jesus is the unique divine Son of God, who was killed on the cross, buried, the tomb <clears throat> was discovered empty, his followers claimed to have seen him alive, and they attributed his death on the cross for their salvation from their sins. So if these Muslims actually knew what Peter taught, what John taught, what Paul taught, they wouldn't be endorsing them as legitimate disciples of Christ. But obviously in their ignorance, they thought that they too taught Islam, and somehow the Christians perverted their message. Note, Paul didn't pervert the message because they are accepting Paul as a true That's right. apostle empowered by God to spread Jesus' message and one of the disciples that God empowered to be victorious and dominant over the unbelievers. So that means these Muslims thought it must have been some other group that came way later. Amen. And not only that, I always like to uh, you know tease our Muslim friends and say, you're acting as if you know better than your God who never mentioned anything about Paul in the Quran. And on top of this, you know better than your prophet. You know why? Because your prophet quoted, let's say, belligerized basically the sayings of Paul about no eye have seen, no heart oh, yes, basically, yes, yes. Uh, yes. you know, have Sal conceived. Exactly. And no came, you know, I mean, speaking about uh, heaven. Yes. And, and uh, he took that saying from 1 Corinthians, for instance, and applied it to the description of heaven. Did you, did you guys understand what... Al just said, a saying of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, is picked up by Muhammad and <clears throat> plagiarized by Muhammad. And Muhammad attributes that citation to Allah himself. He says, Allah has said, no eye has seen or mind has comprehended. So here Muhammad takes the saying of Paul and claims that this is a word from Allah which means that Paul must have been inspired to write that down because the only place that you'll find this citation historically exactly. is in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. And I'm going to bring up the hadith from Bukhari. <clears throat> but if you want to read a couple more references by uh, to show the audience that this is not just an isolated opinion of Qurtubi or, <clears throat> you know, Ibn right. Kathir, but that you find... We have at least about 23 references from my last count. Right. Different Muslims <clears throat> writing at different periods and all agreeing on one thing. Now, there is an ancient tradition that says Paul was one of the messengers that Allah sent to aid and assist and strengthen the two messengers. Now, unpack that implication because we didn't bring, bring out the implication of chapter 36, verses 13 and 14, calling Paul, Simon and John, messengers. That's right. Messenger sent by who? By Allah. And who sent him? <laughs> well, Allah through Jesus, Jesus sent him. Yes. Sent him. I that's mean, right. it's, that's, that's amazing, really. And he went to strengthen them, meaning like his message was so powerful that it was a confirmation of theirs and also kind of like to provide support to what they were saying. Yeah. Now, Ibn al-Jawzi, you know, Ibn al-Jawzi, that's, uh, that's another important source, said the same thing about this particular passage that we're talking uh, about. The Mufassirun or the commentators basically deferred as to who sent the two messengers to, uh, basically, the first of them that Allah Almighty sent them. Notice, Allah sent them, and it is apparent from the Quran, and it is narrated by Ibn Abbas, uh, Ka'b, and Wahab, 
basically, and the second of them that Isa sent him. So there is a debate among the commentators. Who sent him? Was it Allah who sent him? Because the verse is unclear. Or was it Jesus was the author, basically, and the one who ended up sending him, just like in the Great Commission in Matthew 28, 19. So there is this debate about that. And not to mention, of course, that he went on to say that those two were actually, basically, Simon, and he added basically John and Paul. Again, so, notice yeah. the trio again. It's Simon, yeah. Simon, Peter, John, and Paul. Again, confirming what we find in our earliest documents, our earliest sources on Christianity, that Paul met the very disciples of Jesus and received the right hand of fellowship from the disciples of Jesus. And they confirmed that he's a true inspired emissary of Jesus Christ. And the very fact Amen. that the Quran calls them messengers. <clears throat> in Islam, a messenger... <clears throat> is someone who receives revelation. That's right. A messenger exactly. is someone who receives revelation. So in attributing messengership, apostleship, to Paul, Simon, and John, the Quran is basically saying that they were inspired spokespersons of God receiving wahi, revelation, like Muhammad did. Now, obviously, we don't believe Muhammad is a true messenger, but the Muslims are stuck with According this. to their theology, exactly. Yes. I mean, we're using the same theology that Muslims try to apply. Now, here's what we're going to say. Now, uh, for those of you who are uh, listening to us on Radio at Let Us Reason, we're almost getting close to wrapping up. To those of you who are on Facebook Live, we'll wrap up the radio side. We'll take a quick break, like uh, less than a minute maybe, and we'll jump back again into part two, which is meaning week two, for Let Us Reason. You can, by the way, you can go and listen to Let Us Reason on a variety of platforms. You can go to our website, sirainternational.com. You can go to iTunes. You can go to Omni Studios. You can go basically to, uh, I, I was told, uh, to Spotify and, and many other uh, places. Just type Let Us Reason, Al Fadi, and it'll pop up for you. Now, we want to say this. We want to encourage you, of course, as always, to go and subscribe to my brother's uh, YouTube channel. What is what is the Shemunian. name of that channel? Shamoon, and then you add I A N S H A M O U N I A N. Shamoon. And we encourage you to also become a Patreon patron, support yes. the brother. Uh, we encourage you to do the same thing yes, for us please. to go and become also a Patreon supporter. You know there is that uh, link in there, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sierra International. Now uh, we have less than a minute and a half, yes. probably give or take, left. Anything you want to yes. add because there is a teaser now for what is to come. Yes, as God well. willing, in the second session, I will actually quote where Muhammad takes the very words of Paul and attributes, attributes it to Allah, showing that Muhammad realized that this statement of Paul came by revelation from God, whom he thought was Allah. So we'll talk about that in the next session. But again, I want to encourage the Christians study the material. Copy and paste these citations. Bombard the Muslims on their social media pages with the truth that their earliest sources recognize Paul as a legitimate apostle of Jesus who was legitimized by the risen Jesus and Jesus' disciples who gave him the right hand of fellowship, Amen. none of which is true of Muhammad. Paul's creden credentials are impeccable, unassailable. None of, none of that applies to Muhammad who never met any of the eyewitnesses, never got any of the eyewitnesses to legitimize his apostleship, but he stands in contradiction to what Paul and those before him who walked with Jesus on earth taught about Jesus, that he's the risen Lord of, God, Lord of glory, the divine Son of God who died for our salvation, all of which proves Muhammad is a false prophet. Amen, amen. And by the way, uh, remember the story of Paul that he met our Lord on the way to Damascus? Yep. Well, guess what? Early Islamic sources endorse the story. Yep. That's another bombshell that is coming soon in the next part. Until... Uh, basically, uh, you know, we meet again. I pray that uh, you will take our words for downloading the resources, study it, be prepared to discuss it with our Muslim friends. No more of this nonsense, by the way, about, uh, you know, Paul is a liar, Paul wasn't sent by God, and all this stuff that I call baloney, by the way. I mean, all of it is just nothing but hogwash, and all of it is just people repeating like parrots. It's time to put this to rest. Go to this document, study it for yourself. Until we meet again next time, have a blessed day. Okay, so folks, we are going to pick up again and we'll start pretty soon here. That's right. Uh, round man, I look two, tired and old, basically, man. Uh, on Let Us Reason. Now, everybody's watching you, by the way, no, doing I mean, this. That's what I'm saying, man. Yeah. I'm just saying, but I'm saying I look tired and old, man. This, this high-definition yeah. camera brings out... And I want to encourage all of you, by the way, keep sending your questions. I see yes. some questions. We will address those. Like, Don't did worry. Muhammad realize whom Paul is? Well, that's a very tough question.
question to answer because if he's in contact with Christians, and obviously they would have mentioned the names of the disciples of Jesus, but Muhammad doesn't give us their names, so that pretty much I would assume yes, yeah, he, he would have been plural. aware. How are you? That's it. That's all he. Yeah, is but doing. I would. I'm assuming if he's interacting with Christians, they would have made him aware of the names of the disciples of Jesus, but that for some reason he didn't include in the Quran. Right. It would be hard for me to imagine that no Christian mentioned Peter. Oh, it'll be hard. I or mean, John. Absolutely. Or Paul. But why doesn't he mention them in the Quran? Well, he he doesn't mention many people by name in the Quran. Right, right. So, uh, can you read uh, this uh, language? Yeah. You know, is, is that like that? I, I, that's Which not language that's not read? Arabic, and that's at the same time. Hazrat Prince. Yeah. So is, uh, he, is he maybe writing? Yeah, he's Hebrew? probably Pakistani or from Afghanistan. Are yeah, you writing or Hebrew? Somewhere. Baruch Hashem. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, okay, uh, my friends, uh, we're ready to start again. Okay. Ask your questions. Come on, guys. Well, hello everyone. Uh, this is Al Fadi, and uh, we like to welcome you to another special edition of both Let Us Reason, our podcast, and also at the same time, Facebook live stream. With me here in studio is my dear brother Sam Shamon. And in part one, and for you uh, who are listening to Let Us Reason, it was last week. We talked about the references to the Apostle Paul in early Islamic literature. Why is that uh, crucial? Yes. Because our Muslim friends somehow are fixated on this idea that Paul the Apostle is no other than a liar who claimed to have met Jesus, and he's the one who invented Christianity. They call it the Pauline Christianity, and some <laughs> even go as far as claiming that he's the one who invented the doctrine of the Trinity. Yet what we find in these references that we have shared with you uh, last week, and we will continue to share from uh, uh, today, is that the early Islamic scholars disagree with this insinuation. They approve of Paul. They quote uh, stories about him. And as a result of this, really, uh, the ball is in our Muslim friend's court to try to wrestle with these findings. Exactly. And also, we're reading uh, some of these quotations from an actual document that Sam made available, and we'll ask him right now to tell That's you right. where. And I'll be making available for you for download in a PDF format, so you will get your hand on this document. Sam, yes. welcome back, brother. All glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask Jesus to bless this session in the power of the Holy Spirit to save us from error and speak truth <clears throat> in love so that Jesus Christ will be magnified in the hearts of Christians and Muslims until they fall in love with the true Son of God, the Lord of glory. In Jesus' name, fill Amen. us with the Spirit. Now, you can find this document on answeringislamblog.wordpress.com. Now, I just want to ma make it clear. We did, that, we did mention in a previous session. A precious Christian brother, a dear brother who loves Jesus Christ. I didn't ask if I had permission to mention by name, so I'll mention his name. He sent us this file. He's the one who translated, I believe, last count was about 23 sources. That's right. And That's he right. translated them from Arabic and made it available. And now it's online free of charge. And he'll make it available as well yeah, on his social media You'll find the Arabic pages. and the English, basically. So thank the Lord Jesus for the passion of this brother. If you have about 23 sources from Islam's greatest Muslim expositors, all confirming that there's an early tradition a tradition that even goes back to the, to the Sahaba, meaning <clears throat> the companions of Muhammad and the followers that came after, after them. That Paul was a legitimate apostle who was legitimized by God, by Jesus, and Jesus' earthly disciples who gave him the right hand of fellowship. The gig is up. No more attacking Paul, because if you attack Paul, then you're attacking the credibility of the Quran. And you're also saying that all these Islamic sources are fraudulent, cannot be trusted. So you need to throw them under the bus. But if you accept Paul, then that proves that Muhammad is a false prophet. Because Paul, with the true disciples of Jesus, taught that Jesus is the Son of God, our Savior, who died for our sins, Amen. rose victorious all of which exposes Muhammad as an antichrist. Amen, amen. And by the way, I, I did not get the permission from the brother to share his name, but I'm gonna, let's call him Brother Yusuf, okay? And until I get permission, we'll mention his name. Yes. Nevertheless, uh, here's another reference uh, to uh, from a Islamic commentary. Uh, basically, this one is, uh, uh, is uh, by Abu al-Hasan, al, uh, uh, basically al-Ma'roof, okay? Abu al-Hasan al-Ma'roof. Now, he says, Wahab says, or Wahab said, they, uh, their names are John and Paul. Kaab said, Sadiq and Saduk. Okay, I love uh, sometimes these inventions, you know. Yeah, so Another one says, we were strengthened by a third messenger, and he was Simon, and it is said, Shalom. Rather, Allah Almighty added the message to him, because Isa, or Jesus, sent them. 
with the permission of Allah Almighty. So they said the apostles all, or sent the apostles basically all, to the people of Antioch. Now we're going to get to Ibn Kathir, by the way. But before I do this, you have a hadith tradition that you wanted to mention. Yes, uh, we mentioned in the previous session that Muhammad took the words of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, and attributed those words to Allah, confirming that these words are revelation from whom Muhammad thought was the true God. Because the Allah of the Quran is not the God of the Bible, but be that as it may, let me read what Muhammad <clears throat> attributed to Allah and show you that this is actually the citation provided by Paul, showing that Paul is receiving revelation from the true God, from the Lord Jesus Christ. This comes from Sahil Bukhari. This is the English translation. Sahil Bukhari, which you can find online. Sahil Bukhari, volume 9, book 93, number 589. Volume 9, book 93, number 589. Right. Narrated Abu Huraira. Guys, you got to pay attention because you're going to see it's astonishing here how Muhammad is taking, basically plagiarizing the words of the true prophets and apostles of the true God and then passing them off as revelation from Allah given to him. The prophet said, Allah said. Who said? Allah said. That's right. I have prepared for my righteous slaves such excellent things as no eye has seen, <clears throat> nor an ear has ever heard, nor human heart can ever think of. Let me repeat that part again. No eye has ever seen, nor an ear has ever heard, nor a human heart can ever think of. Now let's compare that to what the blessed apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9. However, as it is written, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. Now though Paul is alluding to something written, He's basically giving us the gist of what's written because these words, Isaiah. the exact words yeah. are not found in the Old Testament. That's right. So he's basically giving us a gist, a summary of a promise given by God in the previous scriptures, but the wording is from Paul. That's and right. yet uh, Muhammad says the wording is from Allah. Yeah, so here you go. You have your prophet endorsing the apostle Paul as a spokesperson, a mouthpiece of God, basically. So thank you so much. What do you, yeah, I mean, exactly. Yeah. So uh, that's what I uh, I'm baffled about sometimes about our Muslim friends. They claim their Allah doesn't know what he's doing and their prophet doesn't know what he's doing. And all of a sudden they know what is best of basically for. Yes, yeah, uh, so yeah, it's know. like uh, Muhammad needed his followers to make sense out of the intended meaning of his words. So in other words, though the Quran is supposed to be perfect Arabic and Muhammad was the most eloquent of speakers. Muhammad came out saying something contrary to what his intention was. So now we need the Muslims to help their prophet out and their God out because Muhammad said black, but he really meant to say white. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. And, and I tell people this. I mean, if you really have doubts about what Muhammad or, or the Quran says, start your own religion and your own interpretation and bless you, man. Just yeah. have your followers exactly. because obviously you know better than your God and your prophet. 100%. And I want to emphasize this because in the previous session we did. In chapter 36, verses 13 and 14, from which all these citations are built upon, these citations from the Muslim scholars are explaining chapter 36, verses 13 and 14, where it says three messengers were sent. That's right. Initially two and a third to strengthen, to them. strengthen them. All these commentators are explaining what that passage is referring to and who the messengers were. And you'll find that... <clears throat> The dominant interpretation, because they do offer more than one interpretation, but the dominant interpretation, the interpretation held by the majority, as, as the sources themselves testify, is that it was Simon, John, and Paul. Now, they're called messengers. Sent by Allah. Messengers. Now, right. again, I don't, I don't know if the Christians understand the implication of that. Yeah. A messenger, according to the Quran, is one who is sent with revelation. He receives revelation from God. He communicates revelation. So by identifying Paul and Simon and John as messengers sent by God, <clears throat> what the Muslims inadvertently are doing is confirming that they received revelations from God to pass on to others. Now, you know how some Muslims try to get around that? How? They go, oh, they're not called Rasul. The word Rasul is not used. It's Mursaleen. Because it's oh, El, El Mursalun. Now, you and I both know that the Quran uses the word Rasul and, <clears throat> and when it talks about the Mursaleen interchangeably to refer to the same office of apostleship. That's In right. fact, That's isn't right. Muhammad called Sayyid al Mursaleen? That's right. That's right. There you go. 
you have just shot Muhammad down completely, you know? So if I'm gonna use your argument, linguistically, he's not a prophet anymore. Yeah, because he's the master of the Mursaleen sent one. So if Mursaleen doesn't mean those who are messengers receiving revelation, then he's the master of nothing. Yeah, well, according to you, not us. Yeah, I so. mean, we're, we're, you know, we're not fighters here. We're just sharing the truth with you. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back now to Another powerful comment. By the way, we focus on a number of commentators. By the way, Ibn, anytime you, you, you talk about a Qurtubi, that's a big deal in Islamic commentaries, basically. When you talk about Ibn Jawzi, okay, now we're talking about Ibn Kathir. Why is Ibn Kathir a big deal? Ibn Kathir. I mean, not, I know, but I want yeah, you to articulate Ibn Kathir, that. Ibn now some people may not know the name, but Ibn Kathir was one of the premier students of what Salafi Muslims will, will call Sheikh al Islam Ibn, Ibn Taymiyyah. Ibn Taymiyyah, exactly. Ibn Taymiyyah. He's a Salafi. So if you're yeah. if you're a Salafi, Ibn Taymiyyah is your granddaddy, and Ibn Kathir is one of his premier students with Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyyah. Exactly. Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyyah, Ibn Kathir, and Ibn Taymiyyah, all of those are big deal names in the 13th, 14th century of That's Islam, right. actually. And here's why it's important. Ibn Kathir was almost 1300, I mean, I should say in the 13th century, yeah. 700 years after the time after of Muhammad, Muhammad, and he still endorsed Paul. And, and he's emphasized that he's considered one of the greatest commentators in the Quran. In fact, if you want to properly interpret and translate the Quran, his commentary is a must. You must consult Ibn Kathir's commentary of the Quran, along with Al Tabari. What's and their Al website? He has a. They have a website yes. for him in English. He doesn't have everything, of course. But you can read yeah. the abridged translation of Ibn Kathir by going to alim.com. The other website is now defunct, but you go to alim, a l i m dot com, and it's there free of charge, an abridged translation of Ibn Kathir. And in that abridged translation, it has a citation. Absolutely. On thirty six verses thirteen and fourteen, where he mentions that. <clears throat> The three apostles were Simon, John, and Paul. He says, uh, Yohanna, Bulis, and Shimon. That's right. He gives the Arabic form of the Not names. this Shimon, another one. Yeah, I'm better. Now, here's another thing. If you read Arabic, go to altafsir.com, and you'll find all of these in Arabic, and you'll find, he, you heard him say, the abridged in English. Uh, it's amazing how they skim, basically, the translation, and they just take the fat out. Nevertheless, he lost a lot of fat. But, but I still haven't lost enough. Can you take my fat? Uh, in, in Arabic, you'll find all of it, basically. So let me read at least Ibn Kathir's commentary on this particular verse that we're talking about. Again, it's 30, uh, 6. 36 verses 13 and 14 That's right. in English. So I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm getting confirmation for him so nobody accuses me that I'm, I'm fabricating things. So here's what he says. And his statement. What statement? The verse. Yes. When we sent to them two messengers, they denied them both, means they hastened to disbelieve in them. They rushed into denying the message of these two. So we reinforced them with a third, means we supported and strengthened them with a third messenger. Ibn Juraj narrated from Wahb ibn Sulaiman, from Shu'aib al-Jaba'i. What does it say? The names of the first two messengers were Simon, which is Peter, and John, Yohanna. And the name of the third was Bolus, Paul. What do you know? Exactly. And he even says the city was Antioch, where they Antioch. were first called Christians. Exactly. Acts 11, verse 26. Exactly. <laughs> but you know what I think is even more powerful? Where Ibn Kathir narrates how Jesus met Paul and converted him. And that's what we are going to probably now, we yes. want to show you. In a, like if we go to item number 10, I'm talking to the... Uh, fabulous control room. And by the way, uh, for those of you who are tuning in right now, you're listening to Let Us Reason. This is our podcast that you can go to our uh, basically website, syriainternational.com and click on Let Us Reason in there and you'll be able to listen to this one and all of the previous podcasts. You can even go to our Facebook page, alfadi.sira, go to the post of December 19, 2019, and you'll find this particular live stream right now. And of course, hopefully, Lord willing, we can uh, work on converting this and putting it on YouTube as well, because this is a powerful uh, yes. topic. And this is a teaser. We are going to do a series, meaning number of episodes. We'll take our time, yes. me and Sam, and process all of this info. This info that we're reading it for you right now comes from a document that Sam made available. I'll ask him again to repeat. Where can they find this document? Go to answeringislamblog.wordpress.com. It's there, and you have my permission to download it, print it, copy and paste it, because we want Christians to multiply these references and use it in their witness to the Muslims 
so that Muslims no longer attack Paul without destroying their religion. Amen. And the same thing with me. Go, we'll, we'll make it available for you on Facebook, if possible, if they allow us to do that. And also uh, to my Patreon patrons who are giving through Patreon, I'll make it available for you as well. And this is our way, really, of helping you. And remember... What me and Sam do, maybe it's an hour long, but we would love for this to be expanded beyond this. We yes. want you to take this material, share it with others, share this video with your Muslim friends. We want our Muslim friends who have been lied to many times about who is the Apostle Paul and why they should hate Paul and why Paul is a liar and why Paul invented this or that. We want them to hear this. This is their Islamic sources. Yeah. We're not, did you hear us say anything about a Christian source? Exactly. They're all Islamic exactly. sources. So now we're going to go to what uh, Sam mentioned about how Ibn Kathir actually alluded to the story about Jesus and Paul meeting on the way to Damascus. Now we're going to expose basically this. If we can show this, I think it's on the screen yep. right now. And you read. And one who believed in the Messiah and believed in him from the people of Damascus was a man who is, was sent, uh, called Dina, and was hiding in a cave. By the way, I, this, I think they're referring basically to Ananias, okay? Yes. But anyway, yes. nevertheless, and he was hiding in a cave inside the eastern door close to the solid church for fear of who? The Jewish Paul, okay? <laughs> and he was unjust and oppressive. Was Paul unjust and oppressive? In the beginning. Did Paul say this about himself? Yes. In the beginning, of course, he was attacking the church of Jesus Christ. He was getting Christians killed and imprisoning them. And he said that he was blas a blasphemer. And he said in 1 Timothy 1.15, 1 Timothy 1.15, Here's a trustworthy saying deserving full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am yeah. the worst, the chief of all sinners. And in Philippians 3, as to <clears throat> the church... Yeah, that he was a persecutor. A persecutor. That's right. And the, the book of Acts talked about him in, in Acts yes. 7, 8. Yeah, in Acts, Acts chapter Stephen. 9. And even when Paul recounts his conversion story in Acts 22 and 26, he says that he used to persecute the church of Jesus Christ. He was a blasphemer, but that God then showed him mercy because he did so in ignorance, meaning he didn't know that Jesus was truly the Son of God. And once he discovered that he's truly the Son of God, he then spent his entire life proclaiming the glory and beauty and majesty of Jesus and even died as a martyr for Jesus. Amen. Why do I say this? This is taken from the biblical history of who the Apostle Paul. Let's continue. With hatred for who? The Messiah. Mm -hmm. Notice hatred to the Messiah. Jesus, when he appeared to him, he says, Paul, Paul, or Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Because when you persecute the saints, the followers of Jesus, you persecute the body of Christ himself. And when he came to him, he shaved the head of his nephew. And he, again, these are kind of like funny yeah. stories, by the way. Let's go to the next one. And here is what happened. When Paul heard that the Messiah had gone to Damascus, it's kind of funny. He said the Messiah had gone. Notice, it's the church that is growing in Damascus. But here they're saying Jesus himself appearing in Damascus to his followers. Yeah. What an interesting statement, yeah. by the way. And you can tell they're garbling up what they're hearing. So just understand, right. if the Christians want to know why are these stories garbled up, because that tells you that the Muslims are not consulting the scriptures. They're either hearing these stories being narrated to them orally, and as they're writing them down from memory, they're garbling up the details. Sam. And that's what we find in the Quran as well, which is interesting. Even the Quran garbles up biblical stories. When did Jesus uh, go to Damascus? Was it before the resurrection or after the resurrection? After the resurrection, our Lord Jesus came to Damascus to confront Paul and knock him down and commission him to be his inspired instrument to the Gentiles. And he went, uh, it says Paul went to kill Jesus. Well, it's kind of funny, you know, but anyway, <laughs> nevertheless, uh, he received it basically at Kokoba when he faced <laughs> the companions of the Messiah, an yeah. angel. Now, now let's notice this. We want to start paying attention to what's going on. Look what it says. It says an angel came to him and he hit his face at the end of his wing. So when he saw that he fell into himself, he believed the Messiah. Wow. And he came to him and apologized. To who? To, to the Messiah. Messiah. Now it says an angel did that. That's an interesting thing. Right. That's another to uh, yeah, yeah. story. That's so interesting. I'm wondering if they're thinking that Jesus appeared with an angel, but then that poses more problems because that means Jesus has authority over the angels. Because don't don't forget, folks, why That's right. you'd find this tale. Because according to even the Quran, Allah took Jesus to himself so that Jesus is dwelling with Allah, <clears throat> wherever Allah is, over the angels. Right. And he believed. Believed in who? In the Messiah. I thought you believe in God. 
and he accepted it. Who accepted it? The Messiah accepted, Messiah accepted his belief. Yeah. And wow, he apologized even God. He said, he said, I'm sorry for what I've done. Well, brother, you want to go to uh, Acts 9 just to read portions sure. of this at yeah, least? Yeah. At oh, least yeah. verse 3, starting oh, yeah, from yeah, verse yeah. 3? Let's, let's go to Acts 9 because Acts 9 is quite powerful in that Acts 9 shows you that Jesus does what even Jewish tradition and the Hebrew scriptures testify only God does from heaven. Because don't forget, Jesus is doing this from heaven itself. So, Acts chapter 9. We're going to start at 3. And as he journeyed, Acts 9, we're going to read 3 to 9. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly there sh shined round about him a light from heaven. Now, for those of you on a cross-reference, here's what you do. You go to Psalm 104, verse 2. It says that Yahovah, the true God, Yahweh, clothes himself with light. That his clothing, his garment is light. Because here it says, when Jesus appeared, he appeared in shining, blazing light that blinded Saul. Amen. Okay? So, <clears throat> as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. Suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Why do you persecute me? And he said, who are you, Lord? Now, let me break down the implication. Remember, Paul yeah. was a Jew of Jews, a Hebrew of Hebrews, whose rabbi was Gamaliel, the son of Hillel, considered one of the greatest rabbis of all time. Because Paul was a Pharisee and had <clears throat> studied Judaism intensely, he realized a voice from heaven, which Jewish tradition calls the Bat Kol, daughter of a voice. A voice from heaven and light means that now you're in the divine presence. You are now being confronted with the presence of God. In Jewish tradition, God clothes himself with light, Psalm 104.2, and when you hear a voice from heaven, that's God's voice speaking to you from heaven. So he saw light and he heard a voice. So he realized this is God, but now he's baffled. That's why he calls him Lord, because he knows this is God. But why is God saying, I'm persecuting him? So he's baffled. Who, who really are you then, Lord? That's so right. he realized it's the Lord of heaven. But why would the Lord of heaven saying that I'm persecuting him when I'm actually doing his battle? I'm fighting for his cause. I'm fighting in his That's honor. Right. Just like Muslims think they're doing. Exactly. Today. Because religion, and when you come a fanatic, you yeah. don't know God. You don't have a relationship. But here, the Lord that he thought he was fighting for, all of a sudden appears to him and he doesn't even know him. Exactly. See, he was religious but didn't know the true Lord. And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you persecute. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what would you have me do? And the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told what you must do when you get there. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man, because the light covered his shape. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus, and he was three days without sight, and neither did he eat nor drink. So Jesus appears from heaven the way God in the Old Testament appears, because he is the God of heaven, Amen. one with the Father and the Spirit, and Paul came to his senses. That Jesus is not a mere creature. He is God, the God of Abraham, who became flesh, one with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen, brother. Well, we're uh, approaching our uh, basically close of the podcast, the Let Us Reason. You know, stay on air. I mean, we're not close this. We will continue talking to you for a few more minutes, look at the questions and any other comments. But if you're listening to Let Us Reason, this is basically the end of part two of this topic about the Apostle Paul in early Islamic literature. Lord willing, we will unpack this in another series, myself and Sam, and we will do a longer one and we'll take him maybe yes. one quotation at a time. There's a lot of quotations here. I am thankful for uh, this uh, you know, young man by the name of Ben Malik, also known as uh, basically omnipresent Sam. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, you'll see if you go to this uh, interaction right now on Facebook at alfadi.sira, you'll see the document itself that we've been referring to. There is a link there that takes you, technically speaking, to the website that has all of these quotations. We're thankful for Brother Yusuf who did this. And at the same time, we would like for you to please consider subscribing to his YouTube channel, which yes. is Shamonian. Shimonian. Shamonian, S-H-A-M-O-U-N-I-A-N. Support the brother Amen. through Patreon. Consider subscribing to mine, which is uh, Sira International, C as in Charlie, C-I-R-A International, and support us as well uh, as a Patreon or even through PayPal. Either way, all of these keep us basically going on with yes. ministry and Good also staying on the air and producing more 
of these videos. Any last words, brother? Yes, just keep praying for us. Pray for our families, that the Lord Jesus will protect us, and pray that God will make us more like Jesus in holiness, purity, love, and worship, so that we're not just hearers of the word, proclaimers of the word, but that we are doers of the word, living the glory of Jesus Christ and manifesting it and being sold out for his honor because he's worthy that we live for him and even die for him. So pray for that, that we are truly doers in love with Jesus, loving him more than anything, because that's what we need. Amen. Amen. So thank you again for tuning in to Let Us Reason. And thank you for those of you who are still joining us on this live, uh, basically, stream on Facebook. Stay on. Uh, do not leave yet. We will continue our discussions with you. May the Lord bless you and be with you. And we will interact with you again in the near future. Okay, everyone. So thank you so much, by the way, for being patient with us. This is uh, something special we started to do, okay. taking care of both, you know, platforms, let us reason the podcast and at the same time doing this live stream. So uh, let's let's uh, take a look if there is any comments, yeah. any questions for us. Uh, if something maybe came to your mind as you've been hearing us discuss all of this. And thank you, by the way, for making that link available, guys. Yeah. Um, that's wonderful. Again, repeat to people where they yes. can go and find it. Yeah, you can go to answeringislamblog.wordpress.com. I'm put, I've been posting the link in the comments section. That's right. So I'm going to post it one more time. And just uh, before I even take a question, this is one I want people to understand that this position that says Paul was one of the three is the position of the majority of scholars because this is Tafsir Fath al Qadir by Al Shawkani. Show, exactly. Okay, Shawkani. Sure. And let me read what he says here. Because I want you to understand that he's saying this is the majority. This is what the majority believe because they give two interpretations. They go, the ones that the majority of scholars accept is the one that includes Paul. Here it is. It was said that the name of the two was John and Simon. The names of the three were said to be Sadiq, Mus Musadduq, and Shalom, as stated by Ibn Jarir and others. And it is said, Simon and John and Paul, we strengthen with the third, as is read by the majority with emphasis. Let me say it again. And it is said, Simon, meaning Peter, and John and Paul, we strengthen with a third, as is read by the majority with emphasis. This is Amen. what the majority of scholars believe. It's referring to Paul along with Simon and John. So let me post the link again. And here you go. Amen. So let's take a look. Uh, uh, someone, I think it's uh, Akash Haider, is asking about the idea of uh, those who follow you will be made superior. Yeah. He meant it's chapter 3, verse 55, not 35. Yeah. Chapter so, 3, verse let's elaborate on that yeah. a little bit more. Yeah, in the previous session, I don't know if he was listening, but maybe he came in late. But in chapter 3, verse 55, Allah speaking to Isa, alayhi salam. We don't believe Allah of the Quran is a true God or Isa is the true Jesus. But, Alhamdulillah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Subhanallah. Okay, now, in that passage of the Quran, this conversation takes place right when Jesus is about to be taken to Allah. Allah promises Jesus that I'm going to take you to myself. Notice, it didn't say he's going to take him to the second heaven. I'm going to take you to myself. Where I am, you're going to be with me where I am. And then I'm going to make those who follow you superior to those who disbelieve till the day of resurrection. So notice the promise. From this moment of me taking to myself, your followers will be strengthened and empowered by me, Allah. And I'm going to make them dominant, superior, over against unbelievers till the day of resurrection. Now, if the Quran is right, that means Jesus' true followers prevailed, they were victorious, they vanquished the unbelievers, and their dominance will remain till the day of resurrection. That means you, you should be able to look at the history of Christianity and see what that dominant group has been and what their message has been, and you're going to find that the dominant group and their message is that message found in the New Testament because it's the New Testament documents that have been preserved and has spread all over the world. And this message says that God is triune. Jesus is God in the flesh who died for our sins and rose again. So if the Quran is true, this must be the true message because this is the message that's dominating. That's right. But if you say it's the false message, that means either Allah lied or Allah was powerless because others came and thwarted exactly. Allah's purpose, showing that it is Paul and those who preach like Paul that are greater than Allah. So we should say, al bulis Akbar. Yeah, exactly. And that's why we call them dilemmas. We love those dilemmas. Yes, sir. They're beautiful. Because you're going to have to really wrestle with this tension. Either this or that, and both choices are tough to try to swallow. Let's see if there is any other, uh, basically, comments. Um, if we can scroll maybe up. 
Uh, somebody saying, exactly, Brother Al-Fadi. I like it when people make these kind of comments. Exactly, right? Yeah. Because they agree with you. And if they agree with you, that means that you know they're right. Right? Okay. Um, you know, that's my humble side, by the way. Very much. Uh, I'm not seeing really any questions other than the one we just addressed right now. Um, and you, you, you guys are uh, able to go to our yeah. uh, comments section. You'll see the link uh, that uh, Sam kindly posted for you. Post Again, it, yeah. we'll make it available on other uh, pages as well. And if you're a Patreon patron watching this as well, we'll make it available for you through that platform as well. Now... Um, I'm not really seeing any questions. The only other question I saw was from the same gentleman when he said, uh, did Paul, did Muhammad know about Paul? Did he hear about Paul? And I tried to address it briefly, but I'll repeat again. I'd be very surprised <clears throat> that Muhammad did not know about Paul or Peter or Simon because if he's interacting with Christians, obviously Christians are going to be telling him, Jesus is our Lord and his followers were Peter, Simon, Paul. But does that mean that Muhammad knew what their message was? No. You can tell from the Quran that Muhammad is pretty much getting his information orally. What he's hearing Jews and Christians are saying, as they're garbling up what the Bible says, then then he garbles up what they garbled up. Because that's what happens when you try to go by memory. I'll tell you, hey, in the Bible, you know, I'll give example, Christmas story. How many of you, let me just let me put it this way. Most people that I talk to are Christians think that when Jesus was born, the Magi and the shepherds all showed up at the same time and that the star appeared when Jesus was born. And that's why when you see manger scenes, what do you see? A star, the baby Jesus in a manger, and, and the Magi and the shepherds. In reality, that's not what the Bible teaches. Right. If you go to Luke chapter 2 and you read from verses 8 to 15, it says that the shepherds appeared to Jesus when he was born <clears throat> as he was swaddled by his mother in a manger. But the Magi came later and the star showed up later because when you read Matthew chapter 2, when the Magi showed up, Jesus was at least two years old living in a house, not in a manger. But see, this is what, uh, what I mean by garbling up the details so that right. when you go by memory or you go by oral tradition, you're going to take two different episodes, two different events, garble them together. And so that's what's happening with Muhammad. He's hearing Christians garbling up biblical t stories because they couldn't carry a Bible in their hand. Amen. They didn't have that convenience back then. So then he garbles up what they garble up. Yeah. And that's how, uh, you know, Sam destroys Christmas for all of you. Thank and, you. And we love him. You know, that's why we love the brother. But I mean, what Sam's point is this. Uh, whomever wrote these kind of stories that we quoted don't have a clue what exactly. the actual historical, chronological, you know, order and things like that. They just took what they heard and put it together. Now, it's an interesting thing, by the way. Uh, we know that Muhammad heard a lot of negative things about Jesus from the Jews. Yes. But never that he heard anything about Paul because Nothing. he would have reported it probably. Exactly. I just think that Muhammad assumed that Paul would have pro taught the same message and that he's blaming the later Christians for corrupting Paul's message. Abel Yeshua asked me a question which he should already know the answer to. You should already know the answer to this. How would I answer a Muslim who says that the true followers of Jesus are the Muslims? Okay, Abel Yeshua, point to me, <clears throat> point a group in the first century, second century, third century, fourth century, that claimed to be followers of Jesus that believed exactly the way Muhammad believed in the Quran. Because it yep. doesn't say that Jesus' followers will be dominant when Muhammad shows up. See, exactly, Abel Yeshua, it doesn't say that. Pay attention to what I said. You need to pay attention because this is easy to refute, and I need Christians to be sharp and not let such pathetic objections go unchallenged and <clears throat> not refuted. It says, from the time of Jesus, his followers became dominant, and that's confirmed by 6114. If this is referring to Muslims who follow Muhammad and follow the Quran, Point out a group historically in the first century, second century, third century, fourth century, up until Muhammad is born, that claimed to follow Jesus and believed exactly the things the Quran says about Allah and Jesus. Right, <clears throat> exactly. Where is that group? They don't exist. What group dominated and prevailed from the time of Jesus' ascension until Muhammad? The so-called Pauline, Pauline Christians. So if that's not true Christianity, that means either Allah lied, right? Or Allah failed, or the Quran is a lie. 
That's right. That's the dilemma. And that's really the real issue here that we like to point out is like, you know, I, I read some of the Arabic commentators, by the way, that you're referring to. They do wrestle with this because they know they're, it's embarrassing. So they have to come up with these ideas like, oh, he was talking about the Prophet Muhammad and, and all these phrases that are added to his name. Nevertheless, show us a proof, historical proof. I mean, yes, I can yes. say anything right now. I can say it was about Sam, by the way. Exactly. I mean, everything was about Sam. Joseph so, Smith. so what? Joseph exactly. Smith. I mean, anyone can make these kind of claims. I mean, talk is cheap, by the way, until we present tangible evidence, yeah. historical writings, archaeological evidence. By the way, they didn't find anything when they're digging, by the way, in Mecca and doing these remodels. They, <laughs> they didn't find any archaeological thing, and yet we're convinced that something was taking uh, place yeah. in there. Nevertheless. And, uh, don't forget, though, yeah. the Quran says the victory of the disciples would start when Jesus went to heaven, and it confirms in 6114. And we gave dominance to those who believed. And so they defeated the unbelievers, 6114. So you can't get around it. It's irrefutable. This is why it's a dilemma. And Muslims, the only thing they can do is say, well, Christian and Islam are false. Yeah. But you can't remain a Muslim. Either you follow Jesus and worship him as Lord and Savior, or you say, I give up on all religions. Yeah. Arbit saying uh, is asking about the term Nasara. Yeah, have you ever, you know, have you ever, uh, uh, you know. Yeah, that, that to this day, scholars exactly. are baffled I know, why, I know. why Muhammad decided to call Christians Nasara. Sidney Griffith wrote about that, by the yes. way, one of the scholars. Yeah, yeah, and and I, I don't, I'm not a, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of Sidney Griffith uh, because, yeah. I, number one, I think, and it has nothing to do with his religion. I, if I'm, if I'm, not confused, he is a Mormon. I believe so, but that's irrelevant. I, I think I'm, he teaches at the uh, Catholic University in, okay. in D.C. Yeah. So you know, w yeah. whether he's a Mormon or not, that's irrelevant because you can be a Mormon still, do good history and right. present honest facts. He tries to bend over backwards to try to justify the Quran's errors and find explanations to show that the Quran is not really an error in the things it says and attributes to Christians. Again, we're back to scholarly work that exactly. they try to use, unfortunately, political correctness at the ex and expense of truth. That's why I'm not a, a fan of his. He wrote a book on what the Quran is saying basically about the Bible, and he pretty much is very sympathetic and apologetic for the errors in the Quran about what Christians believed, about, let's say, the deity of Christ and the Trinity, and he tries to find a way of excusing Muhammad's ignorance and perversion of what Christians believe. So I'm not a very big yeah. fan of this. this but here's the interesting story. thing, Arbit. Yeah. Why didn't the Quran call him Messihayin? That's, that's the thing. Why didn't the Quran call him by the actual name that yeah, they no, are called? That's a mystery. Yeah, exactly. we, we, Really, there is no really good answer. Some say, well, there was a sect at the time, Muhammad, that called themselves Nazarene, possibly. But if if Muhammad is interacting with other Christian groups besides that particular sect, as he would have, because there wasn't just one sect of Christianity, why label every one of them Nasara? Exactly. Uh, it's a mystery. So we want to close, but I want our brother just to, um, you know, talk about his needs. Talk yes. about your needs. Brother. Yeah, well, you know. as, you can, yeah. as you guys see, God has raised up a group of us. He's raised up my brother Al, he's raised up Jay Smith, David Wood, myself, and he's put in our hearts to devote ourselves entirely to ministry, to glorifying Jesus Christ, to defending the truths of the Christian faith by the power of the Holy Spirit, to strengthen Christians, our brothers and sisters, to be solidified in their faith, have no doubt that the Bible is true, that Jesus is Lord, and also to confront one of the biggest, if not the biggest, challenges to the Christian faith as well as to our freedoms. Because Islam is a threat socially, politically, economically, and militarily. So we feel led by the Spirit to do full-time ministry. So we are dependent on the grace of God working through His church to provide for the work that we do. So if God has put in your hearts, please support my brother. And I'm not just saying it. If I didn't think he was a man of integrity and I didn't think that he was sold out for Christ, I wouldn't be here sharing the platform with him. So support him prayerfully and financially. And also pray for me, my daughters, and that God will bring in the support Amen. and that God will keep me holy and pure. Because my concern is that we're not just preaching, but that we're doing and living the word of God in our lives for the glory of Jesus. And again, we're humans. We fail. We have imperfections and sins we struggle with. But our victory is in Jesus. So pray for the provision. Pray for our health. Pray for our holiness. Pray for our loved ones especially in my case, my two daughters, my angels, whom I love. Amen. Amen. And don't forget to go to his YouTube channel, Shamonian, uh, with an I-N, and uh, I-A-N, I should say. 
and uh, mine, Sierra International. Become a Patreon patron, by the way. That's how one yes. way you can give. That's actually the best way to give, uh, I think, because that gives us the freedom of not to be attached to any organizations that have to jump through red tape. That's right. Right? So thank you, everyone, for um, tuning in with us and watching. And uh, continue, of course, to send us comments and send us questions and reach out also to both of us uh, through these different platforms. We will do our best to interact with you, of course. Thank you so much. and God